Well, I'm not allowed to divulge which armies are using it, but some mm. already are. Um, this thing is already out in the field. Um, Census Q say, for example, quite openly that they are already supporting the Western coalition deployed on the ground uh, in Iraq, and they are active in Ukraine, although, again, I can't, for sort of security reasons, say exactly what they're doing. And right here, we're going we're to talk about AI, artificial intelligence, and some, something new to be interested in, maybe concerned about. Um, let's hear from Oliver Moody, the Berlin correspondent for The Times, who's on the line, who has an interesting story now just coming into The Times Digital Edition. Oliver, welcome to you. Good evening. Hi. So tell me, do about your story. I haven't had a chance to read this story, but I understand what you're talking and you're writing about a new AI program which could be used by the forces of NATO to predict enemy attacks. Do tell us more. That's right. Just a bit of context to explain what this thing is doing. Um, the modern battlefield is absolutely teeming with data points from radar, from light and sound-based sensors from mobile phones, from information that has been kind of scraped from telegram or signal channels. And in theory, this is an amazingly powerful tool because you can use it to really pinpoint the most important targets or to detect enemy movements. In theory, it's like playing a sort of real-time strategy game like Command and Conquer or Age of Empires. But in practice, it hasn't really been like that because these things suck up enormous amounts of computational power and energy. Um, the volume of data is completely overwhelming, and often the data doesn't get to the people who need it most. But this latest innovation is from an Estonian tech startup uh, that works in the military intelligence field called CensusQ. And they're claiming that with their algorithms, they can not only break down the battlefield into a kind of digestible system that will suggest, you know, what is the best weapon system to use against this particular enemy attack, but can also anticipate how things are going to play out in the future. Now, on a tactical level, if you're trying to work out which part of um, the frontline sector that you're in is going to get hit by the enemy, they say that they can work it out over about two days, Max. Wow. On a strategic level, the kind of grand sweep of war planning, which army corps, which brigades are going to be where, when might the summer offensive come? They say that they can anticipate events up to four to six months out. Four to six months. I, I'm just trying to sort of process this in my mind, Oliver. And, I don't know, an analogy that immediately comes to mind is, uh, is playing chess with a computer. And this is a, a very sophisticated computer then, which would have an infinite number of previous games of chess in it. It's looking at a battlefield and superimposing maybe similar situations, the way troops or equipment might move, and then, and then computing the probabilities of this or that move and the outcomes from that. I guess it has to come down an incredibly complex process, Oliver, but based on fairly simple principles. Exactly. And it's very much the way that the machine learning algorithms that we see in other areas of life predict things, including in the most advanced chess simulators like, um, uh, like DeepMind's um, chess program. And um, if you have a large enough body of training data, and in this case, we are talking millions or millions of data points from these individual sensors and bits of intelligence, you do have this vast pool of experience that you can draw on and try and extrapolate those trends yes. into the future. And I, I, I'm just trying to imagine what's going on here. I, and I suppose if you have, because obviously aerial surveillance is very is very sophisticated. You've got satellite surveillance as well. If you can see I don't know, supplies being shipped towards the battle area from a very great distance away, then you can start computing the possibility of action based on the, mm -hmm. the equipment that comes into the hands of different parts of your, of your, of your force. I, is there any sign of this thing happening quickly, Oliver? Is it going to be the hands of, in the hands of NATO armies soon? Um, well, I'm not allowed to divulge which armies are using it, but some mm. already are. Um, this thing is already out in the field. Um, Census Q say, for example, quite openly that they are already supporting the Western coalition deployed on the ground uh, in Iraq, and they are active in Ukraine, although, again, I can't, for sort of security reasons, say exactly what they're doing. And one thing that's really worth pointing out here is that the, the, the Russian full-scale invasion of Ukraine has absolutely 
put rocket boosters under this technology because the Western intelligence services that are supporting Ukraine have masses and masses and masses of data that's coming through, not just from the Ukrainian military and intelligence services, but also from um, Western yeah. spy satellites and intelligence assets. And if you put all that together, the dream is to condense it onto what they call a single pane of glass, one kind of computer console where the military planners can just sit there and say, this is exactly how the battlefield is developing right now, and this is how it might develop mm. over the next few days or weeks or even in some cases months. Well, I've got to say I'm deeply, deeply intrigued by this, especially since you're telling me that you've got all sorts of uh, inside <laughs> confidential knowledge you can't share with us. I mean, I, I, I wonder, though, very basically, if if there are NATO forces, maybe even Ukraine, with this sort of capability, what about Russia? I mean, why are they not developing this? Maybe with a bit of help from their friends sure in are. China. Sure they are. Well, Russia and China have been using these, they're called battlefield or intelligence management systems for two decades. It's not secret mm. that they exist. And there is a kind of clandestine digital arms race going on with these technologies. Um, I'm not party to Western intelligence on what Russia's capabilities are in this field. Mm. I would be absolutely astonished if they're not trying to develop something similar for themselves. Yeah, Oliver, really interested to hear from you about that story there in the Times Digital Edition now. I recommend you give it a read, well, among many other things in the Times, which I think are worth, particularly worth a, a read right now.